So we just have to take all this stuff off and then move the table to the uh, other place. Uh, it's your job. <laughs> I will be a nice guy and help you. We don't really need this table, but it's a really nice table. What are we gonna do? I wanna use it to prep the Peking duck on. You like Peking duck? I have no idea. You never had Peking no, duck before? No, I'm not very uh, well educated. Um, on Peking ducks? <laughs> Peking duck is the best. Peking duck is like one of the great gifts from China. It's like pizza from Italy. Do you like crispy? Yeah. Do you I like know. juicy meat? Uh -huh. Do you like sweet sauces? Uh -huh. We're golden. And Peking duck basically is a roasted duck. There's an art to it. You gotta make sure you get certain steps into the process to get the perfect Peking duck. And that's what we're going to do today. <laughs> it doesn't fit. Back up. This is the good old table from the old studio. One day we'll have a good studio like that again. We're building up the barn. If everything goes right, I got my permit this week and we can start building our demo in November. We might just be finished before, I don't know, January, February. We might have a roof and we can start building up our studio again. It looks good already. It's like industrial vibe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no more joking around. Time to cook some Peking duck. Uh, this is not a Peking duck yet. This is just an ordinary duck. What you want for a good Peking duck is a duck that's not too fat and not too lean. We want to have it somewhere in between. We need some of that fat for juiciness. We need to have a duck that is just right. A lot of meat on there, a lot of meat on the breast. That is really important. First thing that we're gonna do is inspect the duck. We're not gonna need all this part of wings. Look at that, that's just way too much. If we're gonna leave that on, it's gonna burn and we're just gonna take off the parts that we don't need. Pop, cut, gone. Now what we wanna do is inspect the inside of the duck. We want it to be clean. We want everything that we don't need in the duck taken out. Oh my God! <laughs> Next week we're going to the butchers, Denise. We're gonna have some fun. All cleaned up, looking good. We're just checking on the fat. We don't need too much fat in there. Actually, this is a little bit much. We can trim some of that off. That's perfect. Now what we need to do is season the inside of our duck. We need to brine it in a sense, but we're going to do a dry brine. So we're going to start with some coarse sea salt. This is about a quarter cup. To that, we're going to add two tablespoons of five spice powder. We gotta put the salt, not all of it, but you gotta rub it in there. Make sure that it sticks. Make sure we get it everywhere. And this is the dry brine for a Peking duck. Now we're gonna shake out any excess salt. Now we gotta close it up. Here's the first trick to doing Peking duck at home. You wanna get a metal skewer and we're going to cut it down to size because we're gonna use this to pin up the back of the duck. The eh. The, 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 the is behind. This behind. The cavity. We're gonna close off the cavity. That's a nice way to say it. The crack. <laughs> don't, Denise, don't get us demonetized. So we're gonna measure up the size and we're gonna need about this size. Take some pliers and cut it. We'll start completely at the back and then we'll stick the last bit in. Into our ducky. Quack, quack. I am the tiger. Ba, 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 ba. That's how we lock up a peeking duck. Now we're gonna have to let it sit like this for two hours. Two hours? Two hours, Morrison. If you want premium peeking duck, the real good stuff, you gotta have patience. Now that our duck is brined, we need to figure out a way to hang it up. And that's what we're going to do with these two hooks. These are meat hooks. You can get these at any restaurant wholesaler or you can buy them online on Amazon or whatever. Or you can buy these IKEA hooks because we don't need to stick it in the skin. It doesn't need to have a point. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these under the wings of our duck. Now we can lift up our duck as easy as that. Put them together. And hey, what do you know? We can hang our duck. Now we're going to boil this duck. So let's get a pot of boiling water. Now we got a pot of boiling water. Just gonna shut that off. 
it's time to cook the skin of our duck. And look at how the skin transforms and how it starts to shrink up. It even starts to get a bit yellow. This is one of the most critical points of the cooking process of Peking duck. Boiling water over the skin, it will tighten it up. This is the preparation that will help you get your skin extra crispy. This is also the time where if you have any leftover feathers still on your duck, you can pluck them off. With the hot water getting onto the skin, they start sticking out, so it's very easy to remove them now. Next step, marinating our duck. Our marinade is quite simple. We're gonna need vinegar, we're going to need some syrup, and we're going to need some soy sauce. We're going to start with half a cup of vinegar, and this is natural aged vinegar in oak barrels. This is the good stuff. Three tablespoons of soy sauce, and two large tablespoons of syrup. Mix that up until the syrup is dissolved. Now, if you don't wanna spend a long time stirring the marinade, you can heat it up and speed up the process of dissolving our syrup. Like with any good marinade, we want it to be sour. We need a hint of sweetness there, but we also wanna experience that soy flavor. Oh, ooh, nice. Wanna taste it, Denise? So sour. Hey, hey, we need it to be sour. We need some acidity to help marinate this duck. Now our duck is done, we need to let it air dry. This is a critical part in the process as well. The drying of the skin will make sure that it turns out crispy. Basically, we're already starting the cooking process. And there's two ways to do it. One, you get one of these fancy fridge that has a fan in it, which blowing and just let the air swirl around in your fridge. Or you don't have one, like I do. So we just gotta hang it in the outside air. Now don't get scared, don't run away, don't think, Oh boy, this is so bad for our duck. It's really not. We're going to hang our duck. And we're going to put a fan next to it. I'm already explaining it. Let's just do it. Careful, Morrison. So the crew here is a little worried that our duck is gonna fall and they're really hungry. So basically Denise, and she has little faith in my ability to hang ducks. I'm just gonna stick in the, the meat hooks into the duck. Does that make you feel better? I'm not gonna torture the, the duck any more than this. It already looks good. Oh, oh boy! Oh God. <laughs> so you have to stand here and when it falls, you have to catch it, okay? Now we wait for six hours. Guys, I was just checking on, uh, on the duck and like the whole day we made jokes about the birds flying over and maybe they want to catch the, the duck. And it's been like, I don't know, five, six hours now. I was just walking by. I don't know if I have to tell uh, Rul this, but... Who took the duck? I put it in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> I was so scared and I wasn't wasn't sure if I had to tell you that you were afraid it was gone. Uh, I, yeah. I already told the audience. I put it in the fridge. How long ago? <laughs> like um, I don't know, 2 hours ago? Yeah, so I thought okay, there could be two options. One, a bird took it or two this is just a sick joke. It was good enough, it was ready. So I took it off, I put it in the fridge just to make sure it didn't spoil. The bird spoil. doesn't take it. Yeah, and then the dog didn't take it and whatever, so. Okay, so it's fine. We're good, we're golden. It's fine. We, all we need to do now is fire up the barbecue and start cooking. We're using Kamada Joe's Big Block. We're gonna put it in the bottom of our smoker. We don't need a lot of charcoal because we only need a temperature of 160 degrees Celsius. So let's fire this up. We'll put in two fire starters. There we go, we got fire. We'll wait until our charcoal in the center is starting to become white. Then we're going to put the rest of the barbecue on top of this and then we'll set the temperature. This is perfect. We got a nice bit of heat. More than this we don't need. So time to build up the barbecue, get our stacks on. Now the cool thing about this is that we got a bit of height between the fire and our rings. If you got, say, like a, a barrel cooker or a barrel smoker, that's perfect for this purpose as well. Come on, Martian, I'll show you where I left that duck. Get out of the kitchen. Ah, ah, ah. That's how I train my dogs. Yeah. Oh, hey! 
come out of the kitchen. No, they do. She does almost exactly what I say. Here we go. There's our ducky. Now the cool thing we've got here. Look, we can put our hooks underneath. This duck will hang from the lid. There we go. Going in. It's going to work like a chimney. So I'm going to open the top vent and I'm going to close the bottom vents. To almost close, just a hair open. I don't want the temperature to rise up too fast. Now we got a race, Morrison. We got 45 minutes to make a plum sauce. I got the Joe Jr. already set up. We're going to use it as a little stove. It's already running at a temperature of 100 degrees. Fahrenheit, which is around 200 degrees Celsius. I'm going to open up the bottom vent and we're going to let this come to a hot temperature where we can actually fry something in a pan. You gotta have a good plum sauce where you're making Peking duck. I wanna keep it simple, but we're also gonna make it tasty. Got these fresh plums and these things taste amazing. They're super soft and tender. Look, when I squeeze them, the then sticks. So that means they're really, really ripe and sweet. I'm going to cut them open. Give them a little twist. Take out the core. Now the difference between a good homemade plum sauce and a store-bought plum sauce is the structure. We want to leave it a little bit coarse. So we're just going to cut these open and then chop them up. Make them real fine with our knife. We're not going to put this in a processor that would just ruin the structure of it and the story that we actually went through the trouble to make a good plum sauce. I'm gonna take 40 grams of clarified butter because as you know, every good sauce starts with a butter. Now this is syrup. Basically this is beet, sugar beet syrup, but you can use maltose syrup. What do you think, Marshall? One more spoon? Oh yeah. Two more. Let it warm up together with the butter. Now we're going to put in our plums. Ooh, look at how soft these are. So we're gonna mix this all up and we're going to let it simmer. All right, let's check on our duck. Why did you put the smoker all the way here, Morrison? I know it's a great scenery, but you're making me walk. It's just cows and fields and rainbows and sunshine. Nobody cares about that. Everybody wants to see the food. Woo! That's what people care about. So it's looking good. We got some hot spots, so that's why we need to turn this around. I want to check in on it every 10 minutes or so, just to make sure we get it right. I'm measuring core temperature of 75 degrees Celsius. Yes, that's right, we killed all the bacteria. But more importantly, let's check out the outside skin. Look at this. <laughs> this is super awesome. Nice and golden brown. Absolutely perfect. It's been a long, long day. Look, the sun is setting behind me. Now I get it, Marshall. Now I get why you wanted this place. Beautiful, beautiful sunset, beautiful Peking duck. And as it is cooling down, as we're letting this rest, you can see that the skin is starting to shrivel up just like a sausage, but still it's crispy and it's juicy underneath. So this is gonna be amazing. We just gotta give it around 20 minutes or so just to relax and let the juices from black flow back. No, I didn't drink. And when it's done, then we're going to slice into it. Look at that, a beautiful plum sauce. Perfect homemade plum sauce. Now, if you want to kick this up a notch, you can add star anise, you can add soy sauce, you can add anything you want to this. Garlic, ginger, you can go completely crazy. But this is pure plum sauce, just butter, plums, and a little bit of syrup. So that's basically it. Very, very simple and easy to make. Just get the right plums, the sweet ones, which taste fantastic. Now we're going to open this up. First, I'm going to take out our homemade skewer that holds everything together. Then I'm going to take off the legs. That's some juicy duck. Now we're going to slice off the breast fillet. Look at our beautiful breast. We got the nice color on the skin. We got the juicy meat. Let's slice it up. We want to keep these pieces in order for presentation purposes. Wow, that looks so good. Oh, I want to bite into it right now. But we can't. We got to take the thumbnail. So that's what we're going to do right now. And the sun just went under and immediately it got darker. So we need a little bit of light because I want to show you guys how good this actually looks. And then there was light. Feast your eyes on this. 
course we need to try this before we are completely covered in darkness. A little bit of sauce. Oh my God. I love picking duck. Mm. And a good plum sauce. The secret to good picking duck is actually farm raised duck. You don't want to use the, the wild ducks because they have too much flavor. The farm raised ones, they are really, really good. You should try it, Marshall. Mm. Can I? Of course you can. Good old Peking duck memory. From the last time you went to Beijing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> More. Morrison, you want to share it with her? Give us a thumbs up if you want Denise to have another piece. It's so cute that you're holding your own lamp. <laughs> <laughs> we should close with the video. I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, I hope you show us a, some appreciation for making it through the whole day making Peking duck. And uh, if you enjoyed it, leave us a big thumbs up, comment down below. And uh, thank you patrons, YouTube members, you guys freaking rock. And in the meantime, exactly. and keep on grilling. Save one for Marsha. Meh. Meh. Ah, you're out of luck, Marsha. You do a good job. <laughs> Perfect. Don't kill it. Oh, man. Mm. That's really good. <laughs>